Welcome to micro lecture 54. This is halohydrin formation. Okay, in this next reaction, we're adding X2 and water across the double bond so that only one of the halogen atoms adds and then an OH from the water also adds. And these two add in an anti-fashion. Uh, you'll see that the curved arrow mechanism is very, very similar to what you're um, already very familiar with. Uh, and uh, and so predicting the products is very similar as well to all the examples that we've been doing of similar chemistries. So now when we have a double bond, um, what you'll notice in the reagent set is that water is there. So uh, we do pick up the chlorine um, or the halogen, whatever it may be, on the less substituted side, and uh, we pick up the OH group uh, on the opposite side. So it's anti-addition, um, where the OH adds to the more um, substituted carbon. So we get the regiochemistry correct, and with equal likelihood, we have the opposite uh, situation. Okay, so uh, the regiochemistry is that OH adds to the more substituted carbon, chlorine to the less substituted carbon. And the stereochemistry is what we've seen before, um, expect mixtures um, and achiral products, unless you have you know, a chiral starting material that has an R group that is somehow influencing which side these uh, the chlorine and, and the OH can add to. So more simple examples of uh, predicting products for this reaction. The, um, the product is called a halohydrin so let's say we have bromine in water then what we would expect is to have uh, OH on the more substituted side, bromine on the less substituted side, and um, the opposite stereochemistry, the enantiomer, uh, will also form. Okay, so again, these are called halohydrins. It's halohydrin formation. Um, here, what you're noticing too is that these ethyl groups remained on the same face throughout uh, the reaction. Uh, let's do this. Remembering that benzene does not react, um, what we're going to get here is OH adding to the carbon that is going to, through the course of this reaction, uh, be more positive. In other words, if it could form a carbocation, it would be the more stable carbocation uh, because we see at that location that it's in resonance with the benzene ring. So the OH is going to end up over there. We'll talk more about that when we do the mechanism. So that's the regiochemistry prediction. and. Um, Oh, I gotta give myself a halogen. So this is I2 and water. So uh, trans to each other via anti-addition. We have the uh, iodine and the OH, and the OH does add to that carbon in particular. And then we do generate the enantiomer. Okay, so these are both 50-50 uh, mixtures and they're achiral. Mechanistic details, well, it's going to start out looking a lot like uh, the reaction that you've seen with X2 already. Um, and so the double bond attacks the halogen atom, one of the two. The halogen comes back around and attacks the carbon-carbon uh, double bond, kicking out the kicking out the other chlorine as a chloride. 
And so that's how we get that three-membered ring. So this is a chloronium. That chloronium looks like that, but with equal likelihood, we could have formed the chloronium on the other face to look like that. All right, and then uh, we have water in here. And so water is going to be quick, faster than that other chloride. Um, and it's gonna come in and attack at the carbon atom that's more substituted, okay? Again, that's the carbon that in this chloronium ha bears more positive character because if it could be a carbocation, um, it would be the more stable one, it would be the more substituted one. So OH adds to carbon that would be the more stable carbocation, even though a carbocation doesn't form. Uh, and so the next step here, this is uh, very much SN2-like. All right, so we, um, I was missing a curved error there. We kicked the uh, electrons out onto the chlorine releasing it onto this carbon. And um, because of the SN2-like nature of this step, the water approached from the opposite face of the chlorinium. And, uh, and so that means that the water has to be on the wedge. So we have that anti-addition um, so that OH and Cl end up trans to one another. It's gonna force the methyl back Okay, and so we have this as one product, whereas on the other uh, intermediate that I drew, um, we could have had water attack here and release the three-member ring. And this is SN2, so we're gonna get inversion uh, at the site of SN2. One thing um, is that the hydrogen or the oxygen came in with both of its hydrogens. So right now, uh, if I'm drawing a complete mechanism, I have to show that that alcohol is still protonated. And um, in the final step of the mechanism, we can deprotonate. Um, so that means this methyl is there, and I'm just making sure I'm showing all groups. Uh, and so here we're just showing that we have um, an enantiomeric mix. Um, and so the last step of the mechanism is just to deprotonate, uh, and that's how we end up with our final products. Okay, so uh, I just took you through two different pathways for the mechanism. Really, you would only need to show you know, one pathway um, you wouldn't need to show both, uh, but I showed you the uh, additional one, and uh, we didn't really deprotonate. Uh, um, so that mechanism, recall, is uh, that a uh, base, a conjugate base from solution, is going to grab the proton electrons, kick off onto the oxygen atom. Okay, for that final mechanistic detail. But uh, knowing that the chloronium forms on either face, and that the uh, water attacks the more substituted of the two carbons, or the carbon that could bear a positive charge better. Uh, sometimes we'll see that it's not a matter of substitution so much as it is a resonance issue. Um, so I always look and see which carbon atom, you know, of the two carbon atoms that are in the chloronium, which could bear a positive charge better.